there's a story that needs telling and I've seen it repeated so many times that there's probably easily a dozen groups of people who will see this video and say, you were talking about us. <laughs> um, but here, here's what happens. Uh, the, there's a, a new leader or a new person with some authority or need to get something done comes into a company and there's an existing culture there and uh, they need something. They need, they've been given um, some initial tasks, things they need to get done as, as part of their new role. And so they go around and start asking people for these things and they start making these requests and there's no basis for trust. And so since they don't know anything about the culture that's there, they don't know like what is gonna trigger certain reactions in people. And generally when a company has been around for a while and they haven't thought too much about their culture, they might think it's good, but they haven't you know, done anything to make the culture better or to actually define it. Uh, what happens is these people come in and make, make uh, requests and those requests don't fall on deaf ears, they fall on fearful and angry ears. <laughs> and they're like, you're trying to control me, you're giving me more stuff to do, don't you know how many much stuff, how much stuff I already have to do? Uh, that's not my department, you should have been talking to this person, did you talk to that other person first? And all of these other things that happen because there isn't really a structure of trust. There's no structure in the system right now to allow for that person to come in and plug in. So they don't fit in the silos that are there. They don't fit in the existing communication structures, nor can they. They've, they've been brought in, they've been given a mandate or a mission, and that mandate and mission doesn't conform to the existing supposed structure of the company. And so instantly there are misunderstandings and ill results. Okay, people are angry and they start saying things like, you know, you brought this request to me, but it's it's not defined well enough or it's too well defined. Didn't you think you'd even ask me first before you asked me to do this thing? Like what I might want to do. You, you, you've seen these things before that the reactions to someone coming in to a culture that is not explicit to a culture that is poorly defined, to a culture that is frustrating for people who are already in it. And the new people don't know anything about where those frustrations lie, what the events were that caused them to happen. And so we have a situation and what we usually have is an anti-collaborative structure, a structure that works specifically against collaboration. So you've got the, you know, the obvious bugaboo there, which is silos. So there are silos in this situation and that silos are saying, these are the things that happen in this area. These are the things that happen in this area. These are the things that happen in this area. These are the things that happen in this crazy gerrymandered area between them. <laughs> and most of the people who work there don't actually know what those divisions are, but they sure as heck know what they think they are and they're pretty anxious to tell you about them and all of these silos all of this um all of this structure causes division and isolation okay the teams are divided from each other the people within the teams are divided from each other the goal of the creative process is divided from the planning of the creative process, is divided from the results of the, of the process. And so what happens is we have a really screwed up process which then rewards and um, underwrites a really crappy culture. And often that really crappy culture can be sitting underneath the thin veneer of a story of a really fantastic culture. <laughs> so we've walked in many times to companies and they tell us how great their culture is and then they start complaining about each other or they start telling stories about how this fell apart and that person made it fall apart or don't go to this person for this thing or don't do that with that group or blah, 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 blah. A lot of times the beautiful story of a culture sits on top of a pretty fetid underbelly. And so 
two things are happening in this culture. One is the culture is actively fighting complexity. And the second thing is that it is creating dependencies. It lives on dependencies. That horrible tension of team A against team B and their wonderful team identity and how great a team they are and how great team B is. But if you get them into a room, they'll go at each other because they've manufactured stupid dependencies by having things like this. Somebody comes in and asks for a perfectly reasonable thing. And then the existing culture, the existing structure doesn't allow that work to happen because it's split between two, three, four, five, six, 12, 27 teams, right? Or three teams and then four random people. Even worse and probably even more likely. So this has a standard work, anti-collaborative work has a standard work of assignment. There is work and that work needs to be assigned to a person or to a team. And then once it's assigned, they are accountable. And when they are accountable, it becomes their work. And when it becomes their work, anyone else that has to touch that work is a dependency. Well, the work doesn't care about your structure. The work cares about how the work is gonna get done. And the more complex that work is, the more likely there are these dependencies and the people who are assigned to the work are going to get screwed because the silos have caused division and isolation and don't allow the work to flow smoothly. <laughs> Do we have a pattern? <laughs> so we have the anti-collaborative silo of, or of silos and we want to fix that with visualized work. So collaboration would say, hey, as a company, we've got a lot of work that needs to be done. And sometimes that work fits neatly in teams and sometimes it doesn't. More often than not, it doesn't. And so if we're visualizing all that work and we're doing this planning together, we are able to see where work spans these silos. And rather than treating them as divided or isolated, we say, okay, how is this group going to collaborate on this work. That's, that's the solution, right? So rather than focusing on division, who gets the work assigned, how do we solve this division by collaborating rather than isolating ourselves? How do we have conversations about this work such that we can spot the complexity of the work up front? which goes from being complexity like we're fighting about this work to complexity like, oh, hey, here is a chance that we have to work together. So our standard work goes from assignment to of collaborating, of actually working with each other, of teams. You, you call them teams, but we can call them silos. Your team, which is your silo, which is pretending to be a team. <laughs> can work with other teams and then dependencies just become opportunities for collaboration. Every single one of your dependencies is a poorly planned piece of work. It's just that simple. So let's just take a look at what that might look like. So we have a request that we receive. The research, the request is researched. It's planned, it's scheduled, the work is done, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so usually this work over here is the domain of the product or project manager. This, oops, this work here is the domain of the worker. I'll put that there. This work here is the domain of quality control. And up here we have kind of the failure demand domain that nobody wants, but everybody wants to blame each other for. So now we have a team that now has four different silos in it. <laughs> it. It's stunning to me that we still do this. It's 2022 and we have it figured out that in our little fake family of teams that we have not only are we a silo, but we're a silo of silos. And so what we have here is an opportunity to say, you know what, when we have 
planning for our team, we have opportunities to work with the PM, uh, to work with other teams. And back here, we can plan this workout and we can say, hey, all right, the work is planned. And we know it's going to involve team A, team B, and team F. And we're going to give those people a place to go to focus on this work. What we're not going to do is we're not going to say, hey, you know, you all figure it out. We actually provide a space for the collaboration to happen. And if we don't, then that work is always going to take a back seat to the work that people could do alone. Because working alone requires less scheduling and scheduling is the most annoying thing to do on the entire planet. Okay. So if we build a system that auto schedules this work on Tuesday and Thursday for the next two weeks, you're going to get together and work with that other team and you're going to do the, the work with each other. And maybe while you're doing the work with each other, you might even call in the customer, right? So now we're seeing a collaborative opportunity to work together to pair with the other team or to mob with the other team, but also with the customer. So that then when we get into quality controlling, quality checking the work, that's like the user or the customer testing the work and not our own internal QA people because we've already done it to the acceptance of the customer. And then we don't have to have this failure demand step at all, or if we do, it's very rare. But as long as we remain in these domains where we have people who do the work saying, I'm not going to do any planning. I don't do planning. I'm an executor. Well, if you don't know what you're executing or why, then you really are executing the work. Like, <laughs> like with the gallows, you're executing the work, not like you're getting it done, but you're actually finishing work that's going to come back and bite you all in the butt later on. And then you can blame each other about whose fault it was. It wasn't well enough explained. You didn't know what your definition of done was. No, y'all just didn't get together and talk about the work. So we have throughout this system all sorts of opportunities to collaborate, to build this collaborative structure together. So if this was interesting to you at Modus Institute, this is what all of our classes are about, <laughs> uh, is how do you get people on teams, especially now when people are distributed all over the place, how do you get them to collaborate effectively? How do you build a structure within a team, within an organization, within a group, where the professionals on those teams know what to do, know when to do it, and know how to do it together. They respect the complexity of their work. They respect the collaborations. We have over a half dozen classes uh, in our subscription and, of course, our uh, Lean Agile Visual Management Program. Uh, please check them out uh, and also please uh, subscribe. Uh, so more videos like this on the way. Uh, we love this stuff. We love solving these problems. And at Modus Institute, huge global community solving these problems together. So come on and join us.